Hello guys, welcome to Mark Rim Tanks. Right, I want you to smash that like button. First thing you do when you come into my video is smash the like button. Make sure that you see it glowing. So I want you to smash that like button. Does it glow when I say it? Yes or no? Guys, I've been filming for like an hour and yeah, I forgot to turn the microphone on again. So it's always one thing when I'm filming. <laughs> Right, so I've actually fed my tanks. Let me explain everything and we'll go into a little bit more detail. Guys, here yesterday I cut my head, look, and I used a little bit of aloe vera Vaseline and the cut's almost gone in one day. You can barely see it here. And I know guys, you'll be in shock and horror when I tell you this, but I actually cut my own hair as well. And so, yeah, let's get on with the video. Let's talk about what we're gonna do here, guys. Um, I am going to feed the tanks because I've decided that it's not enough to feed them once a week. Let me just pan you doing a wee tad. Once a week is not enough because I'm, I'm seeing that the what we're doing is working, but the um, we're not producing enough berry shrimp and enough, enough babies. So let's increase it a little bit to two times a week. I know we actually increased it to two times a week and then we went back to one time a week, but. My thinking behind this guys is we have to be a little bit more selective on the food that we use. So we are going to start to use food that is harder or stuff that doesn't break apart, right? So in my room, in my room, I think I have at least two packages of food that doesn't break apart. And there's nothing wrong with the other types of food guys like this one here that I use in my Neo tanks and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that type of food for tanks where you have a lot of shrimp, but if you don't have loads and loads of shrimp in a tank, putting foods in like this that break up will pollute the tank. Right? So this type of food won't be going into my tanks, into my bee shrimp tanks. So we're gonna go along the lines of harder foods, ones that we know that are hard and they last a little bit longer in the tank to give the shrimp enough time to actually eat them before they do break apart. Right. So the ones that I know for sure don't break apart are uh, Vin's uh, Blizzard food, I got this from Raymond, thank you very much for that Raymond. Uh, the other one that is very hard and sometimes I've complained about it is shrimp dinner. Maybe being too hard wasn't a bad thing after all. My god, did I just say that? Wasn't too hard after all, yeah. And um, the other one guys that I used to love, that I haven't bought for a while, that I know is hard is Ibidama. And yeah, I was looking on a website yesterday to order some more of it, so yeah, that'll be coming to me very soon too. So we're gonna go up to feeding twice a week. And you can see I've already fed the tanks and the shrimp are going absolutely berserk for it. So I'm hoping with feeding a slightly harder food, uh, the, the shrimp getting what they need and the tank being cleaner, we'll start to see our baby shrimp um, coming along a bit better because yeah, now they're breeding, guys, they are breeding. But I would like to see a little bit more breeding than, than what we're actually seeing. And maybe I'm being a little bit impatient, maybe. But yeah, I want to see a little bit more breeding and I want to see a little bit more activity. I want to see a little bit more uh, buried females and stuff. And by the way, smash that like button if I haven't said it already. Drink more coffee, smash the like button. Mm. But that's not all we will have in store for today. Guys, I can't believe that I filmed for like an hour and I didn't have the thing on. I was actually in the tanks and everything with the camera. Lessons learned. You know what I need is a checklist. And I have to start to have a checklist. You know how many times I've forgotten to switch something on when I've been filming? Now, these two tanks here, they need a water change. My back is kind of getting sore today, so I'm not exactly sure how much we will do. But I would like to get these two tanks here uh, drained right down, filled back up. My water's already ready over there. And I would like to start us to do our little bit of culling into this tank up here and this one here because yeah they're getting kind of full our breeding's coming along nice and, and that tank th those are our black fancy tigers oh my god I actually said it right first time so when you're talking about fancy tigers guys I think what helps is if you say the color first right so red fancy tiger black fancy tiger just say it like that and you'll remember um, but what we have to do with these today is anything that is a cull and I'm going to start to move all culls into the cull tank straight away instead of putting them into the breed out tank, the grow out tank because um, I can tell a cull is going to be a cull before I put it into the grow out tank. There's no point putting 
put in into a space where other shrimp can grow and they can, then they can grow even better. I mean, the only thing that would be the exception to that is if it was a female, maybe. Because guys, I plan to do it like this, right? We're going to take the shrimp out, we're going to move them around. And if uh, girls and stuff are in here and they get buried, we'll be moving them back up to the breeder tank. All right, so all the girls go back up to the breeder tank. Unless you have exquisite shrimp right, that you've been breeding for years, don't do it this way. But if you don't have loads and loads of numbers, move your buried girls back up to the top and then all your good looking boys and stuff will breed with them and you get more good looking shrimp. All right, so that's how we're going to do it. Let's do that now. What are you doing away up there? Did you fall? Did you fall up there? Guys, right, I'm going to do my water here. I've already prepped it. I'm just going to show you what I do before I actually put water into my tanks and stuff. So let me turn you around a little bit over here and you'll see what I mean. Right, so we have our water here. I like to keep it covered because uh, yeah, then you get less algae and stuff growing in there. Let me quickly show you the parameters because this was, I think we have it nailed now. It's about 14 scoops of GH plus into 200 liter, liters of water and it gives me a conductivity of 300 plus okay, so that is what I'm looking for with my shrimp lids 300 plus because this ensures guys I've, I've, this was advice I was given by Raymond as well thank you very much for that Raymond I was having issues over there with failed molts in one tank and he asked me what the um, the readings were so I told him and he said put up your micro semen so I did it's been fixed so that was the issue so this is 300 plus micro semens um, I have the pump in there right now and when I have it in the pump in there right now what I like to do is this guys look just go over to the sink open it up a little bit switch it on now, because I don't want the water that's in this pipe here going into my tank let's switch it on just for a minute just to flush out this pipe that's probably enough and then we're going to put it over here and just leave it on while we actually physically go over here and start to remove some of this water right so I'm going to try and do as close to I don't know maybe about an 80% water change as I can alright guys are we recording? yes is the microphone on? yes um, let me grab some buckets I actually bought some new buckets the other day more from Eula and I think we need probably about three for each tank. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do each one individually. God, these are stuck together. Yeah. Stuck together, new buckets always do this. I'm actually gonna go and grab my little siphon thingamajig through here. Yep, you can hear me because we have an excellent mic. I'm just going to film myself doing this guys because you will want to see everything I'm still not happy with these lights up here they just look so junky let's start to remove some of this water yeah the lights look so junky I think um, I think it may be the only place we're going to spend a bit of money on the lights just to try and fix this issue because I actually don't like looking at the, uh, the white on the lights because it kind of blinds me a little bit but um, yeah, we'll take out about 80% of the water here and we'll fill it back up again let's try and do this kind of quick as well because I want to get onto the shrimp over this side and start to do our little bit culling you know we keep on calling it culling I never actually kill my shrimp you guys know this already I never kill my shrimp, so I don't know why we keep on calling, calling it culling. I don't know why. So that's almost one bucket. These tanks might be 40 litre tanks, this one. I thought they were 50, but it's clearly not 50 because that was one bucket and we're all near, already nearly halfway done on one bucket. You know, there's a little bit of a smell in here today, in this room. I think I might need to chlorinate the drains a little bit I think because I haven't done that since I come here you should probably do that every so often in your shrimp room just 
chlorine at the drain. Do you know add chlorine to the water, to the drain, let it sit overnight kind of thing? So this tank is full of life. And it might only actually need one water change like this, one big water change. I'm going to go down as far as I can because this is the first water change in this tank and this was a EDA tank and it had a lot of ammonia in it when I tested it, it had a lot. So what we're going to do with that guys is we may as well talk about it here while I'm emptying this tank is we are going to start to uh, split up our ADA. If I have original bags of ADA, we're actually going to use it as a percentage with our other soils. So our other soils will also have some ammonia in it. So you could be talking like 80% uh, Tropica Master Soil, which is what I'll probably use. And we'll do 20% ADA Amazonia. And that will give us some ammonia in the tanks because I like all my tanks to have some ammonia. ADA V2, I don't think it has ammonia in it, but ADA V1 is probably the best soil and it's been discontinued, right? So we need to look for a solution. Right, I'll, I'll empty this and we'll be back in a second. Okay, Shrimplets, let's get our tanks filled up. Right, while I do this as well, I think what will happen is we will show you the progress in some of the tanks with the baby how the babies are and yeah and, and I know it feels like I show you this every few days but it's, I think it's interesting to show you guys oh my back I think it's interesting to show you guys just how much progress you can make if you start changing and doing it this way let me turn this on and we're just going to fill it up slow because I don't want to make an absolute mess of the tank with the soil. And so this can just stay in my pocket. Let me grab the macro camera. I actually made sure guys today to uh, make sure this was charged, not like the other day. And I made sure to clean the lenses. I'm going to do that, that checklist to make sure that I actually remember and do everything. Let's have a little look because in some of these tanks it's very, very noticeable some of the changes that we make and the shrimp room is very noticeable how, how much of a difference they make. Right, so for example, uh, this one here, this tank was uh, an Akadama tank and the breeding we had went to almost zero, right? And it was very noticeable that in this tank that the plants were starting to go yellow and yeah, the tank, it was basically, it looked like it was sterile, right? And you, this is a problem with Akadama where it doesn't have that much nutrients in it at all, right? So, a few videos ago, right, I showed you me adding a jar full of soil to the tank. Do you remember it was a couple of episodes back? Yeah, it's made a big difference in this already. Already we have green walls. So the start of green walls, and I'm seeing that the buried girls are more than ever. Let me show you, instead of me talking about it, let me show you. So this is what we're talking about here. Right, I'm seeing that the tank is just a tiny bit more fair. I don't think it will focus away back there. But I want to show you guys, I want to show you guys like the little, I, want, I don't know if we can focus on stuff that small, but on the walls and stuff, it's very noticeable that there's a film of uh, algae or biofilm or whatever it is that's grown in there. You can probably just see it. And as a result, guys, this is food for the shrimp. It is food for the shrimp. Now, I did the same thing, the exact same thing with a few of these tanks because you guys will run into the same issue as I do. Every so often, the tank will become more sterile and you start to see less and less baby shrimp, right? So if it's less sterile, the first giveaway is yellow plants. If you see yellow plants, put in some active soil, some fresh Arctic soil in a jar, and yeah, you should start to see a change. So this was a great example of a tank that was an old ADA tank. This is probably the oldest ADA tank I had there. And this one's years old, this tank. And it has a lot of baby shrimp in it now, guys, because we refreshed the soil. I put a little base layer on here of fresh soil not too long ago. And yeah, we're starting to see baby shrimp all over the place, like on most of the surfaces and stuff in here now 
I don't think it will focus away back there. If I go over here, you'll see that we have shrimp, shrimp on the glass, shrimp everywhere, the shrimp on the filter. So there's a, f a trend that's on, on an upward trend that is that we're, we're heading in the right direction, if you get what I mean. Hmm. So some of these tanks are still a little bit lagging behind. These guys always breed. These guys haven't bred yet, but these are new shrimp. These guys haven't bred yet, but these are new shrimp. They had babies when we got them. The babies are now a little bit older. Let me see if I can spot anything in here. I like these guys, the goldens, to start showing their babies because they've been buried for a little while. There's loads of babies in this tank. Let me get some macro footage for you. Camera doesn't want to focus because of this lens, you see. So there's loads of babies in this tank. These guys are mostly all under a centimetre. You can see them on the leaves and whatever else. I want to see what is up here on this one because, yeah, there's a lot of... Oh, my God, my back! There's a lot of babies in here, guys. And they're all starting to come for the food as well, which is just awesome. So I'm going to turn the camera on here and I'm just going to pan along towards the food. You guys can already see the baby shrimp. Let's go along. What do we see? More baby shrimp, more baby shrimp. And there's a lot of shrimp. And loads of baby shrimp. Now, this tank also, this is a new tank that was set up in my room when I moved here. But it was a very, very thin layer. It started to go yellow, the plants as well. So we added a jar of ADA Amazonia to the tank. And you can see the results, right? So the, the tank now becomes more green again. We have more biofilm and we have lots and lots of baby shrimp but this process guys it's not instant it's not an instant process where you add something to the tank and you see a result straight away right so when i do this it could it could take a good month for us to see any actual benefit of doing all these little changes in the tanks especially with stuff like feeding as well where, where you make minute adjustments like we're doing with our tanks now like we're honing it in where we will get that perfect balance eventually and the results will be more or less the same as what's happening in this tank loads of baby shrimp loads of baby shrimp loads of baby shrimp these ones here will catch up loads of baby shrimp and these ones will catch up as well all right so that is the plan i just spotted some newborn shrimp in this little tank down here some um some little beautiful newborn shrimplets, so they're like one mil. I'm going to capture them with this camera. I'm just looking at this here, I want to just make sure I turn this off while I do this, because I'll forget that's on there. Okay, so let's see, I did spot a couple of them near the front. Let me just switch on my camera. Image quality is not good. I'm going to press record. Hopefully you can see this little bugger. No, where are you going? It's so small. This is like a probably a day old or something. I thought I'd share that with you. I think I see another one. Let's see, I'm just gonna press record. I'm taking so long to do stuff that it might go to focus. Look at that little guy. So, there, so this thing here next to there, that's a limpet snail for comparison of size. I thought I'd share that with you. All right guys, we're filling up this tank here. Now, this one, uh, what else we can do while we wait is, as I notice some of my tanks are a little bit lacking in leaves, some of them are eaten all the way through. So we need to actually add some more leaves. I, I have packs, I have a lot of packs of Indian almond leaves that we're gonna use, so all I'm gonna do for that is grab a bucket like this. Let me switch off my camera. Grab a bucket like this. I'm gonna grab a packet of leaves. And a knife or a pair of scissors. And right, I'm going to use Indian almond leaves. I think I got these from Raymond as well, actually. Thank you very much, Raymond, sir. And right, we're going to put, let me see, let me just quickly have a look how many is in here because I think there's a lot. My plan, guys, is because these are so big, right? I, sometimes I don't like putting whole ones in because they can kind of like cover the moss. I don't want to stunt the moss's growth. But this is probably more than enough look 
for our tanks because I plan to actually soak these and then just cut them in half. So let's put them in there. I'm actually going to fill up our water over here. Like this. And this is tap water, but this is fine for doing this. Can you guys even see? You can just see. And this is just to soak them a little bit so it's easier for me to cut. I always like to soak my leaves because I like to put them in, in the sink straight away. Right, so you just need enough. You just need enough to cover your actual leaves. Right? And I'll just set these over here until tomorrow. Right guys, can you hear me? Let's uh, start this... Uh, this job that we have today. In these tanks, these are our black fancy tigers. You see, if you remember the color first, then you always remember the name. Uh, let's start in this tank here. And we are going to look for stuff that we want to put into the cold tank. Right? So in the shrimp room, it is really, really hard for us to show you shrimp all the time in here. Guys, I can actually see that they've had babies in here as well. Let me just break out the macro camera and we'll see if we can actually get these in focus. Some of them, I can see baby shrimp, quite a few of them all over the place and in the plants at the back. Let's see if we can get some of them on film for you here. And so there's one there, a way over there in front of that one that's slightly out of focus, there's another baby shrimp. You see it? Just as Base. I can see them in the plants at the back as well. It's never going to work with a macro camera <laughs> looking across there. But you get the gist. It's good to see that these have had babies. It means our conditions are right. So, with that in mind, let's grab our net. I'm just going to grab a towel because I like to put a towel over my knees when I do this. Because I don't like to have wet legs. And um, we're simply guys going to look for a cull shrimp. And I will show you as well, let me see, are you still recording? Yes. I will show you as well, and I'm going to describe it to you as best I can, what we're looking for here. So anything in this, in this tank, guys, that is basically, uh, it if it looks like a crystal black shrimp, then it's got to go. Alright, so unless it is a female, it has to go. So let's have a little look in here, let's see what we can find. Got the net in there. I might actually have to put more food in because they're, they're all over the place here. Let me just grab some more food. We're going to add in our Vin Blizzard food here. I'll put it near the camera as well so you guys can see something. Just a little bit, just to get them to come more to the front. Alright, so does that make sense? It's good to see that these have hard babies as well. Do guys, you not love it when a plan comes together? You know, absolutely love it. So we're going to go in here. Let's look at the shrimp. This one here is an obvious crystal black. You see it? There's two of them in there. The one near the front is an obvious crystal black. But both of them are girls, so that means that they both go into the top tank. You see how this works? So I'm standing up. It's moving the shrimp to the top tank. And this is how our process works. Alright, first two away already. So anything that is a female can be moved up. Anything that is a definite female can be moved up. And it's, oh my god, it's like literally all of them in here. But so that anything that is a male and kind of blonde, like this one here. Like this one, you see it? They can go into the cold tank underneath. Let me just make some room here for them. So that's how we're doing our selective breeding here. Right, so if I had loads and loads and loads of shrimp, I wouldn't put the females back up that look like crystals. Oh, this one is so gorgeous there. Now this one here, look, this one's a... I think it's a, a female, but it's very, very ugly looking. See it's a bit orangey. This could actually have um, golden genetics in it. It gives it that slight orangey colour. It can go into the cowl tank below. 
So we call it the cull tank, but as you know, we never actually cull any of our shrimp. So, guy, I'm basically looking for the ugliest of the ugliest shrimp here. Girls go at the top, ugly shrimp go at the bottom, and this one is quite obviously a girl, a very, very beautiful, very, very beautiful black fancy tiger. It will go into the top. So when you're doing this for your breeder tank, it's just you're doing the exact same thing. Go through the tank, remove all the culls. Because this tank is meant to be our grow out tank. Another beautiful girl. This one is also buried. I don't know if you even see her. We'll try and do as much as we can with this uh, grow out tank today. And uh, this girl, look at her. Some of the best shrimp are away at the bark. Look at this girl, look. Isn't she gorgeous? So we have a lot of very, very nice black fancy tigers. There's so much plants in this top bit that we might actually have to remove some of them. All right, so you can see here, guys, once you start getting down and numbers, it's a bit easier to distinguish. Like this one here, like it's definitely a a male. There's almost like a crystal black, so it's going into the cull tank below. And this process is simply rinse and repeat. And everybody else will have their own standards and whatever. What I'm doing might not be right for you, but it's right for me. Like this one here, let me see. This one's a girl, it's very nice actually, it's going to the top tank. I'll try and show you all the ones that we're moving as well. And the goal with this is to eventually have a tank that is so high quality that all you're doing is moving stuff out of both tanks into the cold tank. So this one here, this one's nice, but it's uh, it's quite obviously a crystal block. See it? You can see it on it in the markings. All right, guys. So I'll finish doing this, and I'll be back in one second. I like to start this tank here. Same process again. We're going to go through the tank, and we are going to see what we can see. Basically, we're going to decide what goes into the cold tank. What stays up here? I can see quite a few red babies too. Which is always nice. Floating plants are a bit of a pain in the butt in this tank, so I'll have to clean them out soon. And so basically a grow out tank is where you put the shrimp to that you want to grow. So it's anything that is around about a centimetre in size, we can move down. Now if the shrimp is already very nice, you don't have to move it unless you want to grow it out. So there's a definite call here. So many baby shrimp in this tank. This one's a definite call. Probably just see it there. Anything that is like has slightly faded patterns and stuff, yeah, just go straight to the cold tank with them. To the wee Roman centre tank, you should see. Be very careful with the shrimp. And I'm also going to take out some of the red ones that I've seen here. They can go to our red fancy tiger tank. See when you start guys doing it from the colour of the shrimp, like this one in here that we just caught there is a fancy, a red fancy tiger. It's so easier to remember. So much easier to remember the name, right? So this is going to go to the, its own tank over here with our other red fancy tigers. Yeah, I think I'm going to actually check this room today. I've actually bleached the drains. I can still smell something. I don't know if it's because of that little leaf that we have in the shell table. It's like a boost of smell. Yeah, I'm going to check this room today. One red one. I'm looking for anything that is exceptionally bad. Because it can go straight into the gold thing. There's so many nice shrimp in here now. Because it's actually really hard to pick bad ones out of here, they're all so good. 
put that one there, but that one's a girl, a big girl. Hmm. I think we might leave it as it is. We've only taken one out. Is that a red one over here? Let's see. It's a red one, but it's such a small one. It's like a baby. Yeah, I don't actually see a lot of very, very bad ones. So this one here is a wee bit bad. What is it the way? Where did it go? This one here. There's two of them right next to each other. This one looks like a crystal. Crystal block. Then it goes straight into the bottom time. And you're basically rinsing your the school sides, so you will never live again. You know, the thing I hate about being this way is that I struggle so hard to see sometimes in the net. I struggle to see if the shrimp has escaped. And so there was another one here, wasn't there? Let us see. Another one that looked like a crystal. This one? No. Now there's one away at the back there that looks like a crystal. Anything that looks like a crystal block, here's another one. If they go into the mix, guys, like these, this one's about to do, like this one, it's very, very small, but it's clearly a crystal block trim. And go into the right time. And right here. Guys, let me know in the comment section below. Are you enjoying this more relaxed format? Or me stopping like this while we do stuff in the shrimp room? Because yeah, this is the way I like to make the videos now. See anything else? There's one right there. Let me see, can I get it from your side? You see it right there, right below the net? It's right in the crowd though. Oh, I don't want to speak you all like that. Hmm, I, d I don't know where it went. It's very hard to see on this side. Let me come around to the back of where you are. But that one there, that might be a male, see the under the net there. I see any more obvious crystals. So I'm going from colour, poor colouring, to pattern. But this one here might be a large male, this one. Let's have a little closer look. This one guys, let me know in the comment section below what do you think this is? Let's see, will it come around? Come on. Come on, let me see from the side. Yeah, it kind of looks like a male, doesn't it? It's very, very straight on the bottom, but it looks like it could be, go either way. Definitely has the crystal pattern on it, so I'm going to remove all the same. We have tons of really nice females in there. So this is the life of the keeper. Let's see, is there anything else? Another crystal here. Come on with these cheap nests, they want to float every time you put them in. I'm trying to get this one crystal here, look. There you go, it went into the nest, so. Crystal block. Tons and tons of problems today, but that's just to give you an idea of what we do in the shrimp room like this. I remember guys as well, all these ones that we're calling culls are going into a massive tank underneath. Now, I don't really see anything else. Not yet anyway. Alright guys, let's sit back down and we'll drink the rest of our coffee. Hello guys, welcome back. It is Saturday for me, right? So I've already fed the tanks. I'm trying to feed my shrimp every Saturday, but I've started also to feed them through the week as well on a Tuesday and a Wednesday right? because I want to see more breeding, more baby action, more berry shrimp, etc. Right? So we're getting no deaths at all in the shrimp room, but I just want to see more action. The shrimp are very, very active, so that tells me that we're kind of in the right ballpark feeding-wise. So yeah, what we're going to do today is, as I said, I've already fed the tanks. What was that there? Did you see that? I think one of my lights. This one here. I'm not sure. I think I saw it flash there. Flash. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But it's, it doesn't look as bright. The shrimp are mega active, but it doesn't look as bright as it should be. We'll check that out in a minute because uh, it looks like only half the light is working to me. Anyway, guys, see tangents and myself. Let me change my glasses so I can actually see myself, my beautiful face in this camera. There you go, oh my god, the lighting's awful again. Hey guys, I made sure all the cameras are fully charged, my macro camera is fully charged. Microphones are on and working, or are they? Are they working? Hello, 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 yes, they're working. Sometimes, guys, when I'm recording, I actually see it on the screen up there, but I don't see it on the screen there today. Hmm. Anywho, right, so I'll stick you guys up on that tank and we'll go in the the aquariums looking at the shrimp because yeah I'm going to try something a little bit different today guys we're going to actually add a light above the aquarium an extra light or an extra lamp to illuminate the shrimp a little bit better to see if it makes it better for filming right so I know that is what a lot of people do but I, I don't think I've ever done it on camera uh, for a video before I've done it in the past with taking pictures so in theory it should help, right? More light means we can see the shrimp better. And my main goal today was to feed the shrimp and just to check on the progress of the babies because yeah, that's what we're all about on this channel. I want to see more baby shrimp, more baby shrimp. And it's not just that guys as well. My back is horrifically sore today. And I don't know what, I don't know how to explain this, but when, when you have a bad back, quite often all the muscles around your back will pick up different strains and whatever else is your back is like moved and pushed out of position like for example so when I get a really really sore back my, my left my right thigh sorry gets really really sore because my weight in my body shifts all the way across to my right side so today it's, it's here and it's the bottom part of my back here oh. so we're going to try and do this quick I'm going to put a glass plate onto the tank to protect the light because it's just going to be an LED floodlight like this I'm going to stick this on top the plug and uh, yeah guys I actually bought a GoPro light for this very reason before and it was absolutely rubbish it didn't even last half an hour a little white light like this and it barely even lit up the tank I was like what is this pure crap right so let's get on with that alright guys I think we'll do this side of the room first because we always do the other side first let's uh, switch it up a little bit so we need a glass plate like this one I don't know if this one will work because this aqua oil tab actually broke off let's see maybe this is not the best idea for this tank all it has to do is sit across like that that's enough you see and then we're going to grab our light that I have here let me just quickly plug it in guys right, so this is just a security light, 6,500 Kelvin light, I think it is 20 watts is it? yeah I think it is right, so here's an extension cable let me just find a plug right, so this tank is very dull because I think this light has had better days god how are we going to keep that there you know what it is, it's the cable is twisted so we're going to twist it around this that is so much better <laughs> you know we might actually even use a light like this in this tank because that is lit up superb superb it's an actual person on facebook called superb as well right, so let's do this tank first i'm not going to put that light onto here because uh, this light is already on there that's the light source the same type of light but um yeah oh my back Alright guys, so let's try our scene. Yeah, I would say that is quite a bit better. And it looks quite a bit better. That's actually able to illuminate the scene. I, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's me. My hands seem to be very shaky today. Let's see how this looks. Uh, zoomed in. It's good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. If anything, it's a little tiny bit overexposed. Now, we did see babies the last time in here, remember? Let's see if I can spot any. I'm just going to switch that off for a second. 
We did see teardrop babies in here the other day. I don't actually see any right now though. Now right, let's go over to our Opie over here. You know what it is guys with this camera, I think I've switched off image stabilization or something. And it's making it look like my hands are mega shaky when I'm filming. I see these guys are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. There's a lot of babies in here as well. Up in the water column. Just free floating around. Well, actually, I will see guys if we can actually capture it because it is quite cool to see. Let me find a part of the glass that's not uber scratched. Maybe here. It's very hard to find but it's not uber scratched. Let me just click record and you can see all the little things coming in out of focus as I move the camera around. See all the little things? These are all little baby shrimp and it kind of looks guys like they're in suspended animation, doesn't it? This is what they're like. More of them, more of them. Everywhere, flea, free floating little buggers. So this tank is the same, it's not as well lit though as the other one. But it's still very nice. And this tank also has little baby shrimp all over the place. Well, actually, guys, we'll see. We'll see if we can actually get macro footage of the shrimp on the glass because I did notice the last time that I filmed with this the actual image was really really good it was about double the size and it was it was in focus much much more with this little lens on right so let's quickly see if I can manually focus on a baby shrimp right so I just one second because I have to manipulate this stuff here I think that went into focus really, really fast, actually. Let me zoom in, because that'll be the true test. I'm just going to press record, because it looks like it's okay. Look at that. Now, I'm not sure if that's any better than before, but the previous images were... I'm just going to move the camera down a little bit. We'll zoom into its head. And we'll be able to see, I'll be able to tell if it is any better. Right, so guys, you see the part that looks like fins beating back and forward? You'll never guess what that is. You'll never guess. It is bizarre. It's actually the shrimp's legs, right? So in the beginning I thought these were fins. Until one day I was filming like this and it stopped and it was actual shrimp's legs beating super fast like this, almost acting like gills. So, that leads on to a question. I've seen various papers and stuff that suggest that Opa'ule are capable of taking in oxygen, wait for it, through their legs. So this is... Uh, Maybe why they do this as well, because that would make sense. If these are animals are capable of taking in oxygen through their legs, just through the movement of their legs, then it would make sense why they would do this. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? That's completely hypothetical, by the way. <laughs> I think I've seen papers of it, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to, guys, I'm going to redo this um, footage that we took there, because I'm, I think I need to adjust something. Yeah, you know what it was? It was the... I think it was the ISO, because it was very, very bright. Let's see, how does that look? ISO... Yeah, you know what it is? It's never... What I see with my eyes, it's never quite the same as what you guys will see on the screen. Some little babies at the back there, you can see some wandering around from like a previous batch. You see them, just small ones. All right, let's see. What did we miss the last time? Oh, the big bristle nose is out on this side. Guys, let me just move the camera around so you can see my beautiful back. <laughs> my beautiful back. The big bristle nose is out over here. If I go slow enough, we might be able to capture him. Oh, he wants to run away. He's, uh, just as I start, just as I was about to press record, 
he goes into his little hole. Now the other male is up here as well. I'm, I think it might be out of range. Let's see, is it out of range for focus? It is, now that is an issue then. No, it came back and see his lovely growths on his head. It came in focus there for a second, you see it? Maybe I need to point down a little bit more. Hey guys, let's have a look at the shrimp. This might take a second to go into focus. Come on. Actually, let me change mode. So that is the issue with this camera. This, uh, this lens is good, but when I want to see the shrimp close, I have to change the mode and then everything else goes back out of focus. This is the Neos in here. Let's see what I mean, look. Look at you, big gorgeous fella. I think the big male will probably come out. It looks like his body is starting to come out there. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's have a look up here at the Neos. Neos are doing awesomely good. I think you guys will like this. Let me just zoom out as far as I can so you can see as much of the shrimp as possible. Look at that. There's Neos everywhere in here. I notice guys with my Neos that they don't really eat so much caterpillar leaves. The, the caterpillar leaf that is in this tank has been the same caterpillar leaf that I put in from the start. The ones that you see in the background there are walnut leaves I think. Let's see, it doesn't really want to focus on, on the bit below. I think it's because I've got a white t-shirt on. You see it? The white t-shirt starts to appear. I don't know what that is. There it is. That's better. Loads and loads of neos. I'm going to go up and show you the moss because you know, there's there's a, like a lot of moss. A lot of babies and stuff in this moss you'll see as I go up the way. You see them every so often, see more babies, more babies. Right, so th this is what I mean with the leaf. Look, it looks like it's brand new and fresh. All right, let's go on to our little rillies. Now, is this the issue now? Look at that, how good is that picture? How good is that image? Isn't that cool? Look at that blue one there. It's not going to focus, is it? Will it focus on the back ones? Can we go up? It should do. Come on, camera. You see what I mean? What the issue with this camera is? It just It's like it doesn't know to focus. To change its focus. A little... See trim there, let's zoom in on you. Hmm. Right, let's go on to these other tanks over here. Okay, so you should be recording again. You should be recording. Right, so we're going to move this glass plate somewhere. Start on the top up here. Move the glass plate and then start the camera. Now this is a little bit fidgety doing this, but hopefully it will just lead to us having much better pictures for you guys to see because yeah I know the pictures sometimes are just goddamn awful so I don't know if this has made an awfully big difference here because I can't quite push the light on even if it makes a tiny bit of difference it will have been worth it let me know in the comment section guys if you if you know what I'm saying alright let's uh, see if we can get this Done. Now I put food in here and it seems to have disappeared. Hmm. I can't actually see the food at all. Now in that glass it's just not that great is it? Taking pictures. It is a little bit better. But I think the glass is distorting a lot of the image. Now the food is obviously behind there somewhere you see it. That girl. Yeah, so shooting through glass is never a good idea. Especially curved glass. 
Let's move that light along. I might actually cut these parts out, guys, so you're not watching this. The boring bits. Because I would imagine it's trifling boring. You guys are like, oh, oh my god, did you say trifling? The word trifling? I did. It's trifling boring. For you heathens to watch me. To repeat. Alright, let's see if we can make that work. Yeah, I maybe need to find something to hold the actual light in place. Now this is actually going through plant plant mass. And it seems to be alright, actually. Little fella there. Tiny little thing, look at the size of you going past. Let's see if we can find any more little fellas close to the glass. No, nothing. Probably all over here at this food. Let me change mode. I'm going to change to scenic mode. Let's see if we can see anything else. You see what I mean? If I go to scenic mode now, it's, it's very hard for... It's actually not too bad, isn't it? Yeah, can't see at the back. Now it's in scenic mode, so it should be able to focus. Let's have a look over here, because I can't see some baby shrimp on this side here. Yeah, look at this little fella. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, so I'm in two minds with this lens, because... Um, when I'm filming with it normally, I, I can... It actually focuses in on it quite well, but then you add a lens on and it struggles and you have to change mode, so... It's a no, no win. It's not a win-win situation. It's a no-win situation. So we'll see. We'll see if I actually keep that lens on there. I do like it, but the camera isn't the be-all and end-all of cameras either. So it's not the best thing ever going. The camera. Let me just put you here. Oh, there's so many shrimp in this tank now. Stay put, little camera. Yeah, there's so many in here. We're going to have to do a little... A little bit moving them around, I think, next week. Guys, let me try something else here. We're going to try Aperture Priori. Because it, it should be able to focus here. Now, I am after increasing my depth of field. I don't, I don't think I can do it in while the camera's running. But um, you can see there's quite a lot, lot of baby shrimp in here. Like this here, right? So the, this is where this camera struggles unless I hold it back a little bit. But they're looking good. This tank is doing really, really well as well. I actually fed them in a couple of different places today because there's so many in here. Hmm, makes sense. Hello there, little fella. All right, looking good. This tank is doing awesome. Let's go down. So we moved shrimp out of this tank last week. So there's only like four shrimp in here. I didn't feed this tank just now because, uh, yeah, there's no point. Until we sort out our... shrimp that go in there, like um, ones that we want to grow on. Now this is so dodgy, this. <laughs> this. But I can tell already that the image quality with, with the light is like 10 times better. You'll see what I mean with this, because it's very noticeable. And shots like this, look. I'm actually able to capture of the shrimp and there's a lot of babies in here look at all those babies guys loads and loads of baby shrimp so this is an aperture priori so which means i just need to hold the camera a little bit further back iso is a little bit high but let me switch to a different mode so you can see the difference so i'm going to go into macro mode 
on this camera and the difference in macro mode guys is I'm able to get really really close like this so I think this is where this, this lens comes into its own is I'm actually able to get really really clear pictures close up like this of all these baby shrimp but as soon as I try and look at all the baby shrimp behind like this look it just goes out to focus so let's try one more thing oh that light nearly moved there let's try it to scenic mode because scenic mode takes more of the picture in like this look and I'm actually able to show you all the baby shrimp so but guys I just wish there was a point and shoot camera that could do all of this at once see that steam there that's from my hand I wish there was something that could do all of this at once because it's a pain having to switch modes on and off, on and off, on and off if I'm filming fast right this vlog style I don't want to have to do tons of editing to cut out all the little bits and whatever alright let's get on to the next tank I'm still waiting on these goldens having their babies we will have to come up with a solution guys for this light for sure because it's can ease, it can quite easily just slip down off there maybe a clamp, some kind of clamping system or or something we'll, we'll figure something out right so let's try oh! guys I just saw a baby shrimp I just saw our first baby shrimp in this tank oh I'm so happy, I'm so happy I love it when I see baby shrimp it's like you better stay you wee bar steward you know I'm zooming away back there guys is that not a baby shrimp right there? <laughs> right, so from these guys we can actually get crystals, crystal blocks because these are goldens right, so you're going to get different types of young from these as well I'm so happy that we finally got baby shrimp in this tank from them I think I counted yesterday in here there's something like five buried females in here so let's change mode, we're going to go to macro mode because the macro mode the difference is the image quality is quite a bit better you'll see now when I stick it on you see? look at all those buried girls look at them aren't they gorgeous? so I'm over the moon that we finally got baby shrimp I don't think I can focus on those guys because of this lens that's the only problem, you see what I mean? how far away they are I don't think I can change mode while I'm filming either which is another pain in the ass so there look, you see the wee baby? it's about as good as it's going to get this distance away but we've got a couple like this there will be more so happy guys, so happy I love it when I see baby shrimp, I love it because it means you're doing the right thing it means you're doing the right thing now this side is a bit dodgy uh, I'm not happy at all with this setup uh, with this light look it just wants to fall off look it's very sketchy now this, water, this light is, um, is I think it's splash proof, it's not 100% waterproof so that's fine as long <laughs> as long as it stays there, let me see maybe I just need to turn this around oh, to give it more weight on one side you know there's maybe an idea a weight, some kind of weight we need to put on it to keep it still like a half a kilo weight of something Oh, you know what would maybe help as well is if I put some rubber silicon on the frame to stop it from slipping that is not good at all now let's try and get this done you know I'm trying to show you this and the shrimp are away at the back actually let's, uh, let me show you this galaxy fishbone it has bow genetics it might actually be a, a boa in, in, its, in the future you can see the little circle dead centre of the screen and the little cover that goes over the top of it that's a sign that this is a boa right, so it has a cape like this it has a back line so I would say yeah I would say this is a boa actually 
as these shrimp get older, let me zoom in a little bit, that line that I'm looking at that goes across the top, this line will shrink down and all these spaces will expand and open up, right? So I will show you the rest of the tank guys but they're way to focus away at the back What is that there? I've seen some like tiny worms and stuff in here today Hopefully no planaria yeah, It's a pity, they've taken the food all the way to the back Little buggers, the same, the same in this tank actually <laughs> The same this tank. So we're going to skip that tank there. Anywhere where the shrimp are not at the front, I'm not going to be able to actually fill. These ones are away at the back as well. So these, maybe I fed the shrimp too soon today, and they've taken they've taken the food to the back. Now this this one here looks really really good. This tank. <laughs> wow. Let me just say wow one more time because I don't think it is properly conveyed in this time what wow actually means. Let me just start from one side here and you'll see exactly what I mean. Let me record and we'll just, just go along half the way along the tank and we'll see what we can see. My god, there's so many babies in here as well. Yeah, so these shrimp have been really, really prolific for me. Really, really prolific. Now I said I was going to go along halfway, that's about now because we're in the middle of the feeding dish. But I'm going to keep on going just because I want to show you the amount of baby shrimp in here. Even if it's just a blur in the back, you can kind of see. Whoop, whoop. What to do again, right? So let's uh, go into scenic mode. I'll set up a bit. Look at that. Now it's very noticeable this tank that um, we seem, I don't know if it's just because I put more light on it here, but it looks to me like there is more biofilm, more algae and stuff. Look at this stuff here. All these little animals. I think this is one of the tanks guys where I went down to one filter. I can't show you, maybe I can. There's only one bubble filter in the middle. And the tank just looks so full of life. So maybe, 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 maybe I'm over filtering still. Maybe over filtering is a bad thing because look at all this stuff on the glass. Look at the shrimp. They obviously love it in this tank. Hey right, guys, let's get you onto the bottom tanks. Yeah, we'll have to come up with a solution for the next uh, for the next time, so we don't have to. I was going to show you these shrimp because the female in here is gorgeous. She is a big, big red fancy tiger. Uh, she has went to the back. I'll just put it in scenic mode and I'll show you where they are in general. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So there's about 10 shrimp in this tank, they've been recently been put in here, so not much action, but you can see there one of the big girl I put in here last week. Yeah, not much to see in that tank, but it's the same in all these other ones as well, where they have... Oh! Guys, I'm just going to quickly take a picture here because, yeah, remember I was telling you about not seeing baby shrimp in here for a while? What is that little bugger doing there? Look at the female behind them. Wow. She is one big buried girl. Look at that little baby. And so if there's one, as we said before, there's going to be more. So it is true what they say, you just have to sit on your hands. Look at these, they're all buried girls, look. That's a male there. Female, female. Male, yeah, I thought they were all girls and not, but that girl at the back there is huge. Little fella come to the front. Good, good. 
I love it when we're seeing your shrimp. I'm going to actually take some footage of up here as well because some of them have come to the front. And I keep on wanting to show you this girl in here because she is uh, like a big red ball. She's dead center of the screen. You see her? See the big, big, massive spot? She has a little spot underneath. Looking very good in the shrimp room today. Very, very good. It's always a good day in the shrimp room when you see baby shrimp. So that has two new tanks that I wasn't expecting baby shrimp and now we have them. So it's a win-win situation for all involved. Alright, what's happening in this blue boat tank? Let's start out for... Guys, the way I'm sitting here, I do apologise if you hear me pumping sometimes. <laughs> but life is life. These guys are doing amazingly good as well. Look at that blue, oh that one's buried as well. See the big blue one that just jumped? You see, get zoomed in, you mother effer. It is buried as well. I thought we would have seen some babies in here today because there has been babies shown in here. I don't mean these ones that are small, sub-adult types. I mean like tier top babies. I don't see, no, I don't, I don't see anything at all. But again, look at this girl here, look. Oh my God. Oh my God. How is it possible that this shrimp looks so gorgeous? How is it possible? And it's buried as well. You can tell I love shrimp keeping, can't you? All right, I don't think this light will fit on the next tank. But we'll, uh, I'll show you anyway, we'll start off with uh, the hoard, because the hoard is massive in this tank. Look at that. The, more, the hoard is uh, forever grown in this tank as we add shrimp to the tank. So this is an, an old fashioned way of saying, is would be our old cull tank because uh, it's where all the shrimp go that we don't want breeding in the tank and it's just where the colour patterns and stuff are not quite up to our standard and I mean, what that, I mean by that guys is shrimp like this, you see how this girl is buried here this is actually from a black fancy tiger and it doesn't look anything like a black fancy tiger so unless you move shrimp like this you're going to keep on getting black you're going to get crystal blocks in a tank of black fancy tigers now let me just see if I can spot any babies in here, and we'll stick on the macro camera for them too. I do, I see a few, but they're quite far back. One way in the back in the middle. I don't see any right up close. Hmm. Which is a shame because then you guys can't see them. There's one here right on this leaf, but it's behind the leaf, right at the front of the gloss. Alright guys, I'm going to actually put your macro mode in this one here, so you can see the horde close up, and uh, you'll have a different appreciation of the different camera modes that I try and show you, because they're all different. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Alright, let's get back up there and we'll have a cup of coffee. Alright guys, you know, one of the things I forgot to actually say in here is uh, I keep on forgetting to thank the supporters of my channel, which are the members, right? so I'm actually going to have up some scrolling text which will have your name on it and I just want to say thank you for supporting the channel. Without the, your support I probably couldn't buy all my equipment and show everything I do in my room on my vlogs about shrimp and how to keep shrimp and whatever else, right? so thank you very much for that. Anywho guys, I want to say thank you for watching if you have enjoyed today's vlog, video log, because that is what this is, I think it's turned into now, video logging, that's why I've become a vlogger, shrimp room vlogging, um, if you enjoyed it today then please do like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next one and I'll try and be a bit more happy and smiling, cheery in the next one but sometimes when my back is bad it's just a little bit hard. And... Anyway, you get the gist, see you in the next one guys.